So our first uh, presenter is uh, Terrell Erickson, and she currently serves as a biologist for the Natural Resource Conservation Service's oversight and evaluation team. She's an internal auditor for that agency in Washington, D.C., but she has strong linkages here in Hawaii, too. Uh, she was a state uh, biologist here in Hawaii for NRCS from the mid-90s uh, to 2005 and was program manager for the Wildlife Habitat Incentives Program and the Wetland uh, Field Guide that she co-authored, sorry, for the Wetlands Reserve Program. And you, you might also have a copy of the book that she co-authored um, that received the 2007 Hawaii Book Publishers Association Award. And uh, I'm proud to say, perhaps announce, that Terrell has been named as the national biologist for NRCS as soon as she gets back from this meeting. So we're very lucky to have her here. Thank you. Terrell? Aloha, everybody. It is so fantastic to be back here and see old friends and um, recognize, I guess, that you do have a friend in Washington, a friend and a colleague in Washington. I've been there for the last couple of years as an oversight and evaluation team member. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about measuring conservation effectiveness, and this is from the federal perspective. And two overriding questions here that um, one should be thinking about as I go through this, and that is, are we accountable? Are we accountable to people and the environment? Are we accountable in terms of our service, our public service? And are we accountable in terms of spending our money on, on programs? To the environment, are we creating and ensuring sustainability? Are we ensuring beneficial effects are occurring from our programs. And then the question is, how do we measure how effective we are being? Um, now, as Sean mentioned, this isn't necessarily a new thing, but it, it did um, kind of coalesce in the Clinton-Gore era, uh, 1993, with the Government Performance and Results Act. Uh, this act was basically designed to provide objective information on the relative effectiveness and efficiency of our programs. It also linked budgets to results, also called performance budgeting. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through this. So who are the people who mainly do performance evaluations for the government? Well, um, oftentimes agencies will have internal groups, and that's, that's what I am with NRCS. It's the oversight and evaluation team. Uh, we, we go around, I, I'm their conservation biologist, it's a small team. Most of the uh, leadership will develop um, ideas and proposals, usually only about six projects per year. So we can very much investigate these things and look for, um, first of all, you know, how well are we doing, what, and what are we doing, what's, what's um, actually happening here, and then why, what's occurring, what, what should we improve upon. So sometimes we're actually brought in to help um, figure out the skeletons in the closet before that they get any kind of external look. <laughs> now, the external um, part auditors, um, the first one I'll talk about, each department has one. So Department of Agriculture, 
Department of the Interior, and these are the Office of Inspector General. Most of these people are accountants. They follow the money. And they're also investigating fraud, waste, and abuse, and all sorts of other kinds of things. The last two, the Government um, Accountability Office, is an independent, nonpartisan uh, evaluator um, of programs, and they are uh, they evaluate at the rest, request of Congress. So they're the legislative branch looking at the executive branch, and they oftentimes will look uh, interagency at a lot of different agencies, like the Chesapeake Bay. They looked at a lot of different agencies and what they are doing, uh, and how to improve upon those. Last but not least, the Office of Management and Budget, um, which is basically run by the White House, uh, also assesses our programs. And in, in fact, in um, 2002, so just five years ago, they developed a program assessment ranking tool, or called PART. I don't know how many of you know about that. Probably some federal folks do. Uh, it, PART, for the most part, is an evaluator and it's a focus on budget integration and performance and on ensuring that your results are really occurring. And it is linked to budgets, so it is kind of an important tool. It's mostly yes, no questions that the federal government has to answer, and then they'll take a look at them and score them. And as you can see here in this graph, 10% is for strategic planning. 20% for program purpose and design, which might be questions like, are you redundant with other federal programs? Um, that kind of thing. Program management, which focuses a lot on how efficient uh, we're running our programs, and that's 20%. But I mainly want to focus on program results. That's 50% of the part score, and that's the most difficult um, for most federal government um, agencies to, um, to score well on. So, Part, the responses must be evidence-based, so they can't be anecdotal analysis. They can't be based on generalities, and for the most part, they need to be pretty current. So in the last uh, five years or so, they've got to be credible, and you start at a baseline of zero. So all your, res all your responses are no unless you provide convincing evidence. Now, I just got this from the... Um, uh, Department of Education website, and I thought that was kind of interesting, uh, that they are actually setting their budgets to how well they're scoring on their part scores. So that first example, the National Center of Education Statistics scored effective, and so their 2007 request was 93 million. Uh, on the other hand, even start, an ineffective program was zeroed out. So this does have an effect on programs. Now, the um, Office of Management and Budget has assessed 96% of all federal programs, which is about 977. Um, this is a good source, expectmore.gov, if you're interested in any of the scores of any of the federal programs um, across the board. Uh, and as you can see there, about 25% of all federal programs are not, uh, are ineffective. 75% are effective. 17% are in that upper, upper range of, of effective. For NRCS, for the Natural Resources Conservation Service, they assessed 93% of our programs are nine. And for the most part, only 11% were not effective. Uh, and, but I wanted to point out that 67% of the majority are just adequate, so I guess we're getting a C rating. <laughs> this shows um, our scores for all of our programs. So the alphabet soup of fed, our Farm Bill programs is on the bottom side. And I'd like to point out that, you know, so Hawaii gets approximately 10 to $12 million a year in these programs uh, for conservation on private lands. On the left-hand side, you've got the target score, so that's the 100%. And as you notice, the very top part, if you can see that, is, is all about program results, the 50%. Just to point out here, as you see along there, that most of the problem that we have in scoring high is about program results. I'd also like to point out that WIP scored the highest, the Wildlife Habitat Incentives Program. So what about results? Um, and, and one of the things that is very clear here is that the definition between outputs and outcomes is important. And what they're really looking at is at, 
for outcomes. And I'll give you just an example. Um, an output might be something like number of acres of agricultural lands that have an NRCS conservation plan. So it's, it's, you know, so they have a plan. Okay, good, great. The outcome instead might be uh, a, a real world public benefit, uh, i.e. Uh, improvement, percent improvement of water quality. So that's the difference between outputs and outcomes, and, and they're really looking for outcomes, as we probably should be as well. Now, the other problem with evidence, and, and these are important um, words, but I won't go into them, but evidence must be competent, relevant, sufficient, accurate, precise, representative, good sampling, and authoritative or credible. Well, particularly in the natural resources arena, it is, it's very difficult to measure our, our performance in results. And in part, a lot of our projects have multiple goals, and sometimes those goals are conflicting and contradictory. Now, you might have a project that's really great for native birds, but not so good for on a watershed scale, or plants versus what the White House wants versus all these different kinds of goals. Not only that, but I think this is in particular a problem in Hawaii, but we don't have much historical and baseline data to compare with. So here's Kanaha Pond, what used to be there before? And even if we have the baseline data, the methodology used to collect that might be different than what you have today and what you want to do today. And so I was thinking, of course, this was in DC, and I was probably desiring an apple banana or a good papaya. <laughs> so instead of apples to oranges, this is the, uh, the, the tropical root, the fruit uh, uh, comparison. But uh, using tools to quantify, for instance, versus using GIS or aerials, uses, versus using indicators or models, versus field observation. All of those things bring about different types of results and different types of baseline data. It's also difficult, of course, and I think, Sean, you mentioned this in your report, that, that it's a matter of timing. When, when are you actually going to be um, evaluating your results on the ground? And here, you might want to evaluate the first couple of years before invasives hit in, and then you have your problem. You might have a seasonal um, type of thing that you want to be looking at. Or it may be COA um, reforestation and, and therefore seven to eight years down the line. Also, as you might know, using models built for one place may not be useful in others. And this is particularly difficult in Hawaii. Using a mainland model to assess our programs is often difficult and needs to be tweaked with. So I'll leave you with an example that uh, how NRCS is trying to um, overcome the, um, in gathering outcomes for performance evaluation. And this is called the Conservation Effects Assessment Project. And we started this project in 2003, and it's definitely a collaborative effort with USGS, um, Nature Conservancy, a lot of different agencies. Um, and, and we're not only looking at, at wildlife or wetlands, but also cropland um, benefits and grazing land benefits of our programs. And the idea here for, for SEEP, as they call it, the Conservation Effects Assessment Program, and this you can Google and, and get a lot more out of um, on the website, is um, it's science-based assessment and research to feed the four corners of, of this design. And that is um, to transfer technology for programs, implementation, estimate practice benefits, evaluate program effectiveness, and also be a, pay, a, play a big part of our strategic planning and goal setting. And this would be at the local, regional, and national levels. So, of course, all of you know my passion for wetlands, so I had to use the wetland example. And the question they were asking for this project was, is the investment in wetlands conservation on agricultural landscapes worth the ecological return? And what they did was they, they designed certain regions, and just recently the Prairie Pothole region in the mid-country 
um, came out with a report on this. And I won't go into all of the things that they found, but generally uh, they were looking at these, uh, these types of services that wetlands provide and came up with quantitative um, analyses as well as qualitative analyses on plant community quality and richness, carbon sequestration, floodwater storage, reduction of sediment and nutrient loading, and potential wildlife habitat suitability. So those are the, the things that they were looking at. And um, did have some issues and problems with what I had talked about before in terms of timing and in terms of everything else. So I'm going to leave you with one thought. And that is not everything that can be counted counts, and not everything that counts can be counted. So thanks to uh, NRCS, and um, thanks to everybody. Oh, 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 May ho o ha ma u ta le o ka le hu a pa ne a pa ne mai pa hai ke ya ma mu e.